fabulous people and happy Pride! It's so great to have you all in the Thaddeus Art Studio today for our Pride celebration. Pride Month is my favorite month because it's so full of life and love and people celebrating themselves and each other. It really inspires me to keep creating some new awesome artwork full of that energy, love, inspiration, all of that. Sparkling beverage. Ooh, that's right! Yeah, so we're also having an after party. Feel free to come and join. Sure, why not? Ah, huh. there's a lipstick stain on this one already. Oh yeah, man, I see what you're saying. So like, Miss Toast took a sip out of it and she realized it wasn't alcoholic, so she put it back on the tray. That is not true. You know that that rosé coloring clashes with my perfectly champagne colored dress. Well, it's not like there's a global pandemic going on or anything, right? What could it hurt? You know, our parties are pretty fierce. But I have some questions about this guest list. Like who invited SPP? And who the hell is Denise? Okay, so... I know, I know, it's Pride Month, be nice. It's just not in my nature. I'm naughty by nature. Now let's get to the stories. Sparkling beverage? Why yes, I will take a sparkling beverage. You see, back in my day, we used to- Oh, uh-uh! Do you want to see our ratings drop even further? I'll take care of it. Give those stories to Miss Toast. You may have something there, Miss Toast. Yes, I'm taking this one. I'm gonna read this one. I'm reading this. It's mine. Mine? Sure, it's pride. You do you. What could go wrong, right? So, this story was sent to us from Carrie. Carrie from Naperville. Carrie says that her subdivision and another nearby are showing their pride throughout June with Show Us Your Pride campaigns. People in Brookdale, May Watts, and other neighborhoods in Naperville are decorating their houses with pride flags and other LGBTQ decorations. Hundreds of households are participating in this decoration celebration. What a simple yet powerful way to celebrate the LGBTQ community. Thank you so much for your story, Carrie. Hey man, sorry to interrupt, but there's like a guy outside with a giant unicorn trying to get in the building. Oh, the delivery guy. Yeah, let him in. Unicorn delivery. Yes! Sparkling beverage? Uh... So this is fabulous. Hey, you look pretty gay. Why don't you stay for our Pride After Party? Oh, I don't know. I don't really have anything to wear to a party. We can fix that. Oh, wow. This looks like the shirt you can get on Thaddeus Art's Redbubble page. Doesn't it, though? So cute. Okay, our next story is about the Pinta Pride Project. Yes. So somebody wrote in to us about the Pinter Pride Project. I just so said I'm that. So I'm going to read a little bit about what they wrote. The Pinter Pride Project was formed by a fabulous person, Molly Pinta, and her family in Buffalo Grove, Illinois. Their goal is to highlight, celebrate, and normalize the LGBTQ community from a very young age in the Northwest suburbs. Last year, they had their first Buffalo Grove Pride Parade, which was a spectacular success. It really was. This family-friendly LGBTQ celebration brought joy and pride to so many of the Chicago suburbs. The energy level of the Pinta family is certainly a phenomenon, organizing not only the Pride Parade, but other events like Pride Proms, Drag Queen Brunches, Drag Queen Story Hours, a National Coming Out Day Extravaganza. Wait, didn't a certain artist show some work at that event? Yeah, I did have a booth there. So this was a really amazing event. I've never been to any kind of coming out day event, really. Um, so this is pretty awesome. The energy level and everything going on throughout the place was so amazing the whole time. I could hear the drag queens and the music and all the fun stuff going on in the main room while I was in the front vendor area. Um, but my art booth was awesome as well. And so many people were kind of coming back and forth throughout the night, buying artwork and just talking about awesome LGBT things and uh, art and it, all this amazingness. It was like meeting a whole nother family. It was very awesome. And my setup looked pretty cool as well. I had a, a closet that people could pop out of. Um, but I digress. 
This year, since of course most large events have been canceled, the Pinta Pride Project announced the Buffalo Grove Pride Drive. The Buffalo Grove Pride Drive was a way for the community to still show its pride, even during the pandemic. People signed up to decorate their houses while cars drove by to see all the colorful amazingness of the houses. The Pinter Pride Project is fierce in bringing about awareness for LGBTQ people. They might be a Buffalo Grove-based organization, but their reach is far beyond. I definitely agree with that. Those fabulous Pintas. Next up, we have the Denise person who's taking up a spot on my guest list. Hi, everyone. I'm Denise Fairbanks, and I'd like to share my Pride celebration story. What does Pride mean to me? Pride. A sense of one's own dignity or worth. To be proud of oneself. How lucky am I to have such a loving, fun, and compassionate circle of folks in my life that are not only friends, but ones I call family. Shout out to Nando, Dowd, Karen, Emma, the Carlsons, the Andreas, the Hollies, Carolyn, Carrie, and my boy Katz, Marcus, and Peter. When I think of Pride Month, my mind immediately sees my son, Michael. Michael was extraordinary, kind, compassionate, unafraid, fierce, talented, and smart. Oh, so smart. Those are just a few words to describe this amazing soul. Michael came out in the sixth grade, out and proud despite, as you can imagine, the bullying endured throughout middle and high school. But that didn't stop him. Nope. In his time spent in these schools, he managed to speak to staff and administration to change the rules, or should I say, create rules to protect the LGBTQ kids in his district. You see, before Michael came along, LGBTQ kids were seen and never heard. He went on to become the president of his GSA and fought with the administration to have the GSA offered in his book clubs and organizations to join in the high school. And he won that battle. My favorite story Michael told me was the night of the homecoming parade. <laughs> While he was driving the school's golf cart, decked out in rainbow streamers representing the GSA, he heard some of the students shouting gay slurs. So in pure Michael fashion, he cranked the Gloria Gaynor hit, I Will Survive. Go Michael. He loved youth outlook, became a youth leader, and showed the youth it's okay to be you. He loved his music, playing cello, speaking French, his friends, and oh, how he loved his cats. I remember taking Michael to see Milk and saying that could be him someday. He had the passion and strength it takes to fight for your rights and for those who may not know the way. Michael had so many wonderful traits, there was just not enough time to tell them all. So it was a snowy day in February, 2013. We lost this beautiful boy. A day the world lost a superhero. I remember so many LGBTQ kids at his funeral telling me how Michael saved their life by telling them, it's okay to be you and stand tall. And that was Michael, always standing tall and proud. I wish you all a happy Pride Month with love, light, and above all, peace. Thank you so much for sharing your heartfelt story with us, Denise. It means so much to me, and I know it's going to mean so much to so many people watching this. You're welcome, and thank you for having me. Hey, I'd like to stay for the party. How about some hair and makeup? Finally, I feel like a real me. Sparkling beverage? Did we just make? Too. Wait, why does the knee slip so thin? Some of us care about our appearance here. Not all of us want to look like in the last minute fried shop and eating their up. That's not true. I am fierce. And you can call me Miss Kitty. Next we have a Mary. See how I read that? See how fierce that was? That was 
fierce. My name is Mary and I'm one of the Drop-In Center volunteers at Youth Outlook and I wanted to give Youth Outlook a huge shout out. It's Pride Month and I wanted to share, um, you know, some things about Youth Outlook. When I was a kid, like I didn't really have any of that kind of stuff like accessible to me growing up, and, and I think it was mostly because um, I wasn't out, you know, like I I was not going to come out at any point, and so even finding a resource like that, I'm not entirely sure like if I would have been brave enough to use it. But you know, I've I've worked with some of the kids there for a little while, and um, I'm so impressed at how self-aware they are, and how lovely they are, and how willing to grow they are. Um, and Youth Outlook gives them the space to do that. It gives them this really safe space and um, it gives them the community, you know? Like they have these, I've seen like really, really, really shy kids come in and you know, um, some of our youth leaders and even even the, even the folks that are not youth leaders, they come in and they welcome everyone with open arms. They try to make them feel um, super, super at home. It's really, really cool that they have that and they have that support system and that they're able to, um, you know, share stories and uh, us as, um, you know, volunteers and uh, facilitators and such we're able to kind of design sessions or group group get-togethers where, where kids can be artistic and, and express their concerns and their, um, you know, all the things that are on their mind. They're not being judged and, and they can be themselves. So I think that's that's a huge thing that, that Youth Outlook gives to, to the youth and I know that it's a really difficult time for them. You know, adolescence is hard enough and being a teen is hard enough, but being queer or trans or both on top of that is just a whole other thing. So to give them a safe space is a really big deal. I wanted to give a shout out to Youth Outlook for um, personal reasons as well. I, I think I I found Youth Outlook at a really big transition period in my life. And I was looking for a community, you know, in, in, in my entire life, uh, high school, uh, college, and even after college, I didn't have that. You know, like I didn't have a safe place and I didn't have a community and it kind of wears on you after a while. And so I, I found Youth Outlook to try and make sure that like if I could contribute even a little bit to youth not feeling the way I did as a, as a, as a young person, then that was completely worth it to me. The, the youth at our site um, and the other youth that I've met at other sites, the volunteers and um, all of the staff that I've met at Youth Outlook, they've just been such a phenomenal group of people and I couldn't have asked to be a part of something like more genuine and more authentic and more beautiful and um, they gave me a community and they gave me exactly what I hoped uh, to give them, you know, so that's kind of that's kind of huge, like you, 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 Youth Outlook has given me something I've never had in my entire life and I feel like I don't have to change the pronouns of my significant other when I go there and I don't have to change the way I talk or I don't have to change like my thoughts so I, I feel like I've found this freedom and like I walk in the world differently now and 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 for the first time I don't feel I don't feel like I I'm like completely wrong but I wanted to give a huge shout out for all that they do for the community for everything they've done for me last but not least I wanted to give a huge shout out to Peter Thaddeus he is um, as beautiful as his artwork is, and, and he, he and Josh, um, I remember the first day at Youth Outlook, they were so welcoming to me, um, and they're so lovely, and, and our site would not be the same without Peter. And then, of course, our master and commander, Nancy, um, with whom I would not know Youth Outlook as it is. So thank you guys, thank you for giving me a family, thank you for giving me a community and a safe place for our youth, um, and, and for being such phenomenal people. I'm so, so proud to be a part of this organization, and I'm so proud to know you guys and to work with you. Thank you so much for your story, Mary, and thank you so much for the amazing work you do with the Youth Outlook Youth. I wanted to give a shout out to the mama bears and the papa bears out there who support their kids no matter their orientation or identity. There's no perfect manual for raising kids, but the best thing a parent can do is listen, learn, and believe your child when they tell you who they are, even when who they are is different from what you expect or have ever imagined for them. I wanna say how much I appreciate my parents and in particular give a happy Father's Day shout out to my dad. He put a paintbrush in my hand from a very early age. Of course, as a painting contractor, dad put those brushes in the hands of my brother and I at such a young age for free painting labor. We've all learned and grown so much since then. Happy Father's Day, Dad. 
So I hope these stories have brought you some inspiration. I know they brought me a lot of inspiration. Whether you're out there on the front lines as an essential worker, or you're sheltering in place, or you're out there fighting for the lives of our black friends and family, remember to stay safe, stay focused, and happy Pride! 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 What a fun event. Looks like I'm the last one standing. Oh, for God's <laughs> sake. If that's what being in charge looks like, I'm going to send in my resume. Does that, how does that make you feel? Happy love! <laughs> Happy Pride! <laughs> Ooh, yeah! <laughs> you want me to sit and say that? Well, I don't know about all that.